Yo guys, what's up? It's Sherry here coming at you guys with a WPF Season 7 Manicarp League half season analysis. So if you haven't been keeping up with my videos, it's already been six weeks out of the 12 week period of the regular season of WPF. And in my opinion, I think we're doing very, very well, if I may say so myself. Uh, and our current record is 6-0. We are currently undefeated and honestly i feel like this is a mistake i don't think i should be undefeated I, I don't know but i think my time to lose is coming uh especially i'm looking forward to a matchup in week nine uh against trt 77 i believe if i'm not mistaken uh his his team is good but his play style is really good as well like he he makes plays i make too so it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be like a smaller scale of me versus lucas all the time so it's gonna be interesting and it's gonna be fun but that's that's like my prediction of when i'm going to take my first loss if, if i don't then i'm not complaining because i think actually uh in mana Carp division if i go like 10 and 0 i'll be like the first person ever in the in all of their like seasons in Matterkarp to go 10 and 0 which i think is cool because i know uh mario went 8 and 0 if i'm not mistaken mario went 8 and 0 throughout the whole season uh last season if i'm not mistaken so i'm trying to beat that hopefully but uh i <laughs> i'm scared i'm gonna go undefeated in regular season and then lose in the first round of playoffs it's gonna be so unfortunate but with that being said and that out the way let's get right into it so if you don't know wpf is a showdown league uh, i think it's it's not is it not dex i'm not sure but it's a showdown league and it has megas in it too last season last season they had like g maxes and things like that but here they have megas and things like that and i really really love my team i think my team is really really good but we're gonna get right into the standing slash our team breakdown and take a little analysis and uh display my opinions about what our team looks like so uh here as of week six these are the standings some matches are missing uh if i'm not mistaken but our our record is correct everything else there is correct everything else is fine but we are 6-0, we are undefeated right now, and honestly, if I can get like two or three more wins, I'm clinched for playoffs, or wait, yeah, I'm clinched for playoffs, two or three more wins, so uh, I think that's really, really good, and then just looking at our conference, because uh, I think we're the Brains Conference, and they're the Raws Conference, Fightings, and Psychics, so uh, looking at like the playoff push, I know the Shinhai Chandelures are not 1-3, and three. they're actually like 3-3 three and three as of week 6, so that just hasn't been updated on the website yet. The Shinhai Chandelures are making an epic comeback, like absolutely epic. They, without the three losses, they took over a team, the team's really good, they changed it to where it looks even better than it did before, and on top of that, with take uh eliminate the three losses they are three and oh right now that's crazy like honestly i don't even see the three like legit this guy is making a comeback and he's really really good and i i am excited to go against him in week um i think it's week nine or eight i think it's nine yeah i think it's nine so very very excited and looking at the our conference still um there's nothing else really i want to highlight honestly uh i'm just really excited kaden the person we battled in week five if i'm not mistaken uh he's doing pretty well at three and three um huh. our week seven matchup is against uh the san diego peaches if i'm not mistaken no oh good there are names there are coach names our week seven matchup is against sean is op yeah uh, he is the team with Charizard and Motrez and Gallade, so that's gonna be scary. But looking at the bronze conference It looks kind of interesting. I definitely I see like uh, uh, Definitely see like leaders in each division like uh, in Machamp division as of now uh, the Cherubis, oh my god, <laughs> I really dislike Grubbins, not not because of his character, like not at all, like he's a really cool dude, it's just the fact that he's 6-0 too, like that's, like no, I want to be the only one, I want to take the spotlight, so uh, he's 6-0, uh, he is sort of in the same position as I am, if he gets like 2 or 3 more wins and he's pretty much clinched, and then uh, the San Diego Pichus looks like they're doing really, really well. Uh, I think they have a, uh, a double 
if I'm not mistaken. I think they swept 6-0 with it. Or it was it might have been the different um division. So but nonetheless, and then the Buzzwell division we have uh highlighting the British Blaziken, uh coached by MS23, and then the Nations of Crows, they're doing really, really well. The London Lapras, they're off to a rough start, but I think if they can get some wins, I think they still have a chance of making playoffs as well. Uh, as it's top four from each division. I don't know if it's top no top four from each conference I don't know if it's top two from each division or if all the divisions are just put together But all I know is it's top four from each conference. So That is enough of the stats. Uh, I'm not gonna really make any playoff predictions because it's still too early to make them Moving on into our trades and transactions and our team analysis, right? so we if you look we did make some changes to our team and the battle that influenced my changes was week six against Gummy. Um, I always knew that my team was really, really ground and really, really steel weak. I I knew that for a while, but that battle just made it like, okay, like this is a problem and you need to try and fix it. So I didn't really fix it too much with Rabambi. It gives me higher speed and it also fills my speed gap between Aerodactyl and Zorark. So it, it's good there. Uh, it's also switching to ground types, but it doesn't like steel types. Girder is a really, really good uh, physical wall. I still think Hitmontop was better at doing things like that. However, Girder for tier 5 is really, really good. The only thing that Girder is missing from being a better Hitmontop is honestly Intimidate. Like, it has the coverage and it has the abilities that it can abuse, so... Definitely, definitely, definitely excited to use Girder. But those are all the changes that we made. We only made two. We only have a max of three. And honestly, I don't really see myself making more trades. I think it's just uh, going to stay like this for the rest of the season. Now, we are going to move into arguably the best part of this video. The match analysis. So, here we go. Week one, oh my god, it glitched. I don't know if you guys saw that. But week one, it could start me. We won this game, and our current standing at this point was 1 0 plus 4. I think a really, really good play that I made that game, uh, which is the play of the game, I put it on the side, is the fact that I clicked Haze immediately when Salamence came in, uh, predicting Dragon Dance. I couldn't let that thing set up. If Salamence set up, uh, they won, <laughs> being completely honest. And then eventually, I decided I was going to die anyway. If they were plus 1, that's fine for Rhydon. So I decided to risk a skull burn and I got it. So that was really really good as well But something I could have worked on that game was my use of Zoroark I've never used Zoroark in draft league format. I don't think I've ever used Zoroark ever So I didn't really I wasn't playing with it all too well uh, its purpose is to uh, Try and be an imposter and get off some good damage, but I, I played it really bad I only made one play with Zoroark that was good arguably so uh, and the MVP of this game was definitely Toxipo Toxapex. Toxapex helped uh, with the Megalopony matchup as well as the Salamence DD and even with the matchup against Drapion. It did really, really well and it really showed how amazing Toxapex is. Because people say Toxapex isn't good and honestly I think it is. They also associate Toxapex with Stall and that's, that's, a, uh, that's an assumption that needs to be uh, taken out of people's brains. But... That was week one against Star Maiden. Uh, we did win, like I said, and then we're going to move on to week two against the 29 Azure. Uh, we actually won this game, and our current standing is 2-0 and plus 10. A positive thing that I really did was I applied pressure with Chandelure. On this play, you can see on the left, I clicked Volt Switch on their Hatterene switch in, and I went into Chandelure. They had no spec Shadow Ball switch-ins at all. And I was able to take out their prime way of setting Trick Room because their team was obviously Trick Room. And it really helped me in the future uh, for that game and allowed me to win. We actually did win 6-0, but it was because our opponent forfeited. Which, honestly, looking now at, like, in week 6 slash week 7, uh, Toxifex would have got those kills anyway. So, it, Toxifex got the last two kills. They forfeited with Zapdos and Frost less left. For, they would have got the last two kills. So, it, it was... It was all good, but something I could have worked on was running Leaf Storm on Rotom. I was not expecting Claydol at all. Was not expecting Claydol, and Claydol came, and I was like, "Oh, I don't have Leaf Storm because I Claydol's matchup is so bad. Why would you bring Claydol?" But uh, I had to bait that I had Leaf Storm, uh, which worked out for me in the end. But you know, still, I should. I don't. I 
I need to run these storm of Rotom. That that was the lesson that I had. And yeah, so we did win this game, like I said in the beginning. And I'm very excited to move on into week three, which was against plushies. Uh, and we won this game, and at the time, this was one of my favorite games, uh, not favorite, yeah, favorite games to play. Uh, we won, and our current standing here was 3 0 plus 13. And I think a really, really good play that I made here was when I sacked the uh, Rotom Mo to an overheat. I'm actually, I'm gonna play that again. I'm gonna play that again. Uh, it was when I sacked the Rotom Mo to an overheat to get it to minus two so that I can go into Haxorus, set up a DD, and clean because they were modest Scarf Lele. So I was like, okay, cool. I can clean up with uh, Haxorus once I get a plus one. They don't have Will O Wisp, they can't do anything to me, and I proceed to three. Uh, I proceed to get another uh, three kills, killing Blissey, Lele, and Rotom. Now, a positive, like I said, was keeping Haxorus in the back and chipping down their walls. Haxorus actually got five kills that game, which I think is crazy. Um, however, something I could have worked on was playing my Jirachi better. Uh, my Jirachi set was really, really good. I just didn't use it to its fullest potential. I didn't. I really didn't. And I wish I did. And hopefully, I can improve on using Jirachi. I think Jirachi, in the next few weeks that I'm going to... Uh, talk about did really really well for me, and I'm really really thankful I got Shirachi. So MVP of this game was definitely Haxorus. It picked up five kills, and it was really 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 good at doing a ton of damage. I fell in love with Haxorus after WPF, and I even drafted it in PMU as well. I just fell in love with it. I've never used it, uh, which is surprising, but yeah, I'm in love with Haxorus now. Haxorus is really really good and really underrated. Here is week four against uh, the Mexico City Volcaronas. We did win this game, and our current standing is 4 0 plus 19. A positive thing that I did was I handled DD Charizard very, very well with my ride on in the back, uh, saving it so that it can 1v1 it. And then once it died, I actually managed to get a wish off into the ride on, if I'm not mistaken, uh, from Sylveon. But another thing I did really well was the Hitmontop Landorus exchange, tipping it down, getting off an Intimidate, so that I can make an aggressive switch into Aerodactyl and clean up with it. And finally, another good thing that I did was being consistent with Toxapex versus Feeny. Uh, Toxapex was my dedicated answer to Feeny, and I think it was very, very good that I was very, very consistent with that. However, because I was really consistent with that, uh, my opponents started to make predictions and things like that, and some of the predictions they were making was really putting me in a rough spot. So I think I needed to, you know, break out of my shell a little bit, play a little bit more aggressive, and things like that. So the MVP of the game is definitely Hitmontop. Most of the MVPs are the thumbnail. Fun fact. That's... Crazy. But uh, <laughs> well, uh, the MVP is Grandmaster D Ray, aka the Hit on Top, and it helped getting off Intimidates on the potential Charizard and the Landorus so that my walls, so that the other Pokemon in the back can do uh, what they do best. So I'm very happy that I was able to use Hit on Top for the time that I had it. Moving on to week 5 against the Kaden, we won this game, and our current standing at this point was 5 0 plus 25. A thing that I did beautifully was figuring out Caden's playstyle off the rip and abusing that. I saw that they were playing uh, passively with uh, Vaporia, and I just set started setting up Calm Minds. And because they were no bulk Steelix, even if they were bulky Steelix, I lived in Earthquake, but because they were no bulk Steelix, uh, they couldn't live the plus two or sphere that I had and Jirachi proceeded to 6-0 sweep, which I think was really really good I think me calling Kaden out at the beginning was really good and it put me in a really really good position I don't think I could have done anything better this game I think it was good that I was able to call him out so early and I I don't really see the only Pokemon that hit the field by the way were like Pex, Rotom and Sylveon, no, yeah, Pex, Rotom, Sylveon, Rachi, like Chandelure and Haxorus didn't hit the field, but uh, I think very, very good job of me for calling him out and taking advantage of that, and the MVP of this game is definitely, without a doubt, Jirachi. So that is week 5 against the Kaden, and now we are going to move on into my most recent game, week 6 versus Gummy, uh, if it do that, yeah, and I think, 
I'm gonna play it here and it should be low. So uh, I definitely won this game. Uh, the current standing is now 6-0 plus 30. Uh, the positive thing that I did was, first of all, play of the game was when I stayed in on Excadrill. Uh, because if Excadrill set up Sword Stance on my Switch, I lost the game. And I calc and I was like, oh, okay, I'm bulky enough. I live a Jolly Iron Head, if, if he's even Jolly. If he's adamant, it's a roll. And if he kills me, I have Rhydon. So that was a really, really good play on my end, 100%. And I really, really agree with that play. Uh, positive, good job making the right plays. That was under that category, right? And I don't really see, honestly, I don't see what I could have worked on in this game either. I think I played Aerodactyl really, really well against Araquanid because my main problem was webs. Webs were, webs, yes, webs were a big issue for my team. Webs plus sand, and uh, I didn't like it. It was uh, not fun. And then the, the fact that Excadrill, sand, like, this is the game that made me consider trades right here. Excadrill, Garchomp, Tyranitar. That's scary. And honestly, not I'm not trying to say this to be rude because that's not my intention. But I really don't want the London Labyrinth to go to playoffs because if I have to face this in playoffs, it's not going to be fun. It's going to be hard. This was the hardest battle for me. I will arguably say this was the hardest battle or the hardest matchup uh, for me. Sand, sand is just ground steel. I I struggle so hard with it, but. Uh, yeah, and my MVP of the game is definitely Aerodactyl. I think Aerodactyl picked up like three kills. It killed Excadrill, Titar, and uh, Araquanid. So yeah, it picked up three kills, which is nice. But that is week six against Gummy, and those are all of the games that we played so far. Now, uh, stop, stop, thank you. Our record as of now, so we are currently 6-0 and at plus 30 differential. We are currently number one in the league right now with number two being 6-0 and plus 19. And our kill to death uh, kill leader is Mega Aerodactyl sitting at seven kills and zero deaths. I really think it should be more, but uh, you know, your boy is uh, not that good. So I've never used Aerodactyl before. Beal is probably going to yell at me <laughs> because I don't use it right. But uh, yeah, so that is our WPF mid-season analysis for the Rose Tower Copperages. And I want to thank all of you for watching. Uh, I want to thank all of the love for uh, this WPF series. I think I'm actually going to make a playlist for this. But uh, nonetheless, very, very happy and uh, thankful for all of you. So without further ado, I'm going to get up out of here. I will put the other coaches... Uh, youtube channels in the description below as well as who did i shout out in this video i shouted out someone d-ray i'll put d-ray's description in the in oh my god i'll put d-ray's youtube channel in the description below that took so much out of me to say but nonetheless uh i hope you guys stay safe wash your hands and enjoy your family around you that's all i request that's all i ask and i will catch you guys next time peace